Number 70. Before small batteries were available, carbide lamps were used for bicycle light. Acetylene gas, which is C2H2, and solid calcium hydroxide were formed by the reaction of calcium carbide, which is CAC2, with water. The ignition of the acetylene gas provided the light. Currently, the same lamps are used for, by some carvers, and calcium carbide is used to produce acetylene for carbide cannons. Wowzers. <laughs> okay, letter A. It says, outline the steps necessary to answer the following question. What volume of the acetylene, C2H2, at 1.005 atm and 12.2 degrees Celsius is formed by the reaction of 15.48 grams of the calcium carbide, CAC2, with water? And then B, we have to answer the question. So I'm going to basically do the setup for how to answer the question. If you do need to write out the steps in words, you could just basically take what I'm saying and just translate it into words on, you know, your sheet of paper, all right? So the first thing that I see here is that they're asking for a volume of acetylene, C2H2, and they're giving us information of a different compound. Whenever they're asking a question of one compound and they're giving you additional information about another compound, chances are we need a balanced equation. So that's the first thing. We got to write a balanced equation. So... They tell us over here that acetylene gas, C2H2, and solid calcium hydroxide were formed, so that means that these are the products, by the reaction of calcium carbide, CAC2, with water. So it looks like these two are coming together to form acetylene gas and calcium hydroxide. So that's the first thing. Calcium carbide, Ca, C2, plus water is coming together to form acetylene gas, which is C2H2, and calcium hydroxide. Now remember, this is going way back into chemistry in which you guys know how to make a formula. Use those ions. This would be CaOH2, because calcium has a plus two charge and hydroxide always has a minus one, so you crisscross the charges. Now, just writing an equation is not good enough. You just have to make sure that it's balanced. So if you want to pause the video, um, you could try to balance it and just see that it matches my answer. But I'm just going to kind of go a little fast here. The only thing that you basically have to do seems like I have two oxygens and I only have one on this side. So I'm going to put a two in front of here and then I think we should be good to go. We have four total hydrogens, two hydrogens plus two is four. I have one calcium on both sides, two carbons, so we're good with that. Oops, I don't think I can squish this any better. Oh, there we go. That's good enough. Okay, so this is now my balanced equation. So now let's write out everything that we have. They're asking for what volume of the C2H2, so that's this guy, so V equals question mark, at this pressure, right, what volume of this at this pressure, so these go together, right? They're giving me more information about the acetylene. So I have a pressure. I know that it's a pressure because it's an ATM. Atmosphere is ATM, that's pressure. So I have 1.005 ATM. And they tell us a temperature that goes with the acetylene as well. So temperature equals 12.2 uh, degrees Celsius. And now they're telling us that it's formed by the reaction of the CAC2. I have 15.48 grams of it, so I'm just going to write that right with this compound, 15.48 grams. Okie dokie. So the, sec the, you know, the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what formula I'm going to use. Since I have more information about the CAH2 and the question is asking for the volume, let's write a formula for this. Well, they only have one volume, one pressure, and one temperature. There's no sets of anything. So this is the ideal gas law, which is this one, right? PV equals NRT. And maybe I'll just put that over here. So now if we're using PV equals NRT, remember all the units are locked in with that R value. 
of 0.0821. That's a standard number, it's the gas constant. It's got four units, which will tell you all the units of the other variables. This is ATM times liter divided by mole times Kelvin. So the pressure has to be an ATM. And thank goodness they gave it to us an ATM. So no conversion there. So I'm going to just check this off. The volume is what the question's asking for. So I'm going to solve for this. So that means I should know the other three numbers. Well, we're always going to know the R value. That's a constant number. And the temperature, capital T, is in Kelvin. They did give us a temperature, but it's not in Kelvin, unfortunately. So we just have to convert that. Degrees Celsius into Kelvin is pretty easy conversion, right? All we got to do is just plus 273. You can plus 273.15, but uh, this is, I think this is good enough. 12.2 plus 273 is 285.2. Okay. So now I have the, the temperature. Now the only thing is, if I want to solve for the volume, I have to know the end value. And remember, the end value is the moles. And this is very specific. If you're looking for the volume of C2H2, you have to plug in the moles of C2H2. You can't be looking for the volume of one compound and putting in mole values for any other compound. But they didn't tell us what the moles were for C2H2. So I have to go and find it, right? Moles equals question mark. How am I going to get the moles? Oh, that's why they gave me information for, from the other compound. This is going all the way back into chemistry, where we did just regular stoichiometry of grams to moles to moles to grams. I can go from one compound to another, right? I have 15.48, and that's grams of CaC2, and I need to go to the moles of C2H2. But remember... If I want to go to moles of the other compound, I need to go from mole to mole. So I have to convert my grams of CaC2 into moles of CaC2 to finally convert to the other compound. A conversion from one compound to another can only be in mole to mole. So let's get started. 15.48, and that's grams of CaC2 times by the ratio, grams of CaC2 on the bottom. We want to first convert to moles of CaC2. And remember, mole to gram of the same compound is always the periodic table. Periodic table says that you only got one mole and the mass goes with the grams. So periodic table out, we got 40.08 plus 2 times 12.01, 64.1 grams. Cancel out the grams times by the ratio. Throw the unit you don't want on the bottom, mole of CaC2, and then the moles of C2H2 go on the top. Mole to mole of different compounds, remember that's the balance equation. Just look at those coefficients. So I'm only searching for C2H2 and CaC2. In front of the CaC2, there was nothing. Remember, that just means that there was one. And the same thing for this one. There was one. So in this case, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. This cancels out. And now all we have to do is just do 15.48 divided by 64.1. Try not to round as much here because this is not your final answer. So 0.241, uh, we'll say 5, actually we'll say 498, 241498, 49498, four, and that's now moles of the C2H2. So we finally found out that number. This is... 0 0.241498 moles. And now we have the n value, so now we can solve for the volume. Keep in mind, the uh, volume unit in the R value is liters, so this will come out in liters.
but let's just do the math. I'm just going to plug in like a little thing over there. That's pretty good. Going from left to right, P, which was 1.005 times V, which is what we're solving for, equals the moles that we just found, 0 0.241498 times by the R value, 0 0.0821 times by the temperature in Kelvin, 285.2. .2. And then, if I want to solve for the X value, all I have to do is just divide by that pressure value on both sides. So 1.005 on both sides. This cancels out. And we're left with X equals, and remember, this is the volume. So let's see. 0.241498 times 0 0.0821 times 285.2 .2 divided by 1.005. And looks like, looks like uh, four sig figs, probably, I would say. So I would say 5627 does anybody care about sig figs at this point? No. So if I was your teacher or professor, I would just make sure that it's pretty close to this to give you full credit. But your teacher or professor might be different. Remember, this is liters of the C2H2. And you are done. So roughly five and a half, a little bit more than five and a half liters is needed for this problem. And that's it. So hopefully this helped. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I really do appreciate you all. If you guys can help us out, please press the subscribe button. Just gets the word out there that this service exists in the YouTube world. And I thank you so much for that. I will see you later. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.